Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are doing the slightly more in-depth review of the Homer Odysseus. First of all, roll those credits. Okay, welcome back. So, Homer's Odysseus machine. So as we said on the live stream that we did, this is a relaunch of the TiVo brand. Um, this is a Tarantula Pro at its core with some, uh, with some new additions. So there's some things about this machine that I really like. The tool head, really nice. So um, I'll show you in a minute how it does on part cooling. But it's got dual blower part cooling fans. It's really, it's doing quite well. It's a 235 by 235 by 250 build volume. It's got the obligatory um, click wheel screen on the front and it has got a cloned Titan extruder on the back. It is a single Z. Um, it is not a brand name power supply and it is not an AC heated bed. The core of this machine is an MKS Gen L motherboard um, with A series drivers in it. So, first thoughts about the machine. There's perhaps a little bit more plastic on this machine than I would normally like or expect. Um, I seem to recall the original TiVos, all of these plates were, al were aluminium, but I never actually had a TiVo, I only ever saw TiVos. So um, we have to go back to, to, to why, TiVo, um, why TiVo decided to relaunch. So, um, when domestic 3D printers and hobbyist grade printers were really coming in, in into their own, there were a few big names at the time. The main ones really were Creality, Anet, um, GTEC, and, and TiVo. Um, Creality managed to do something through no, through no work of their own, which was that a community around Creality formed. There is a reason why Ender 3s are so popular and why a lot of people tend to recommend them. People recommend them not because they're good machines, because fundamentally they actually aren't that good, um, but they recommend them because the community that sits behind Creality is so large that you can always already find somebody who has broken the machine in exactly the same way you have and how they fixed it. So as a result of that, the community around Creality is actually really, really good, especially around Ender 3s, but around the CR10s and you know all of their different machines that they do. Um, that, that they, they, they do some really nice, that, that they've got a really strong community and they do some pretty nice machines. When it comes to TiVo, TiVo's community was, um, was, was just not quite as well received. So, um, so TiVo's guy, TiVo's community that was there, they weren't as they weren't as all-encompassing around the ways that they broke the machine. Um, they weren't quite as helpful, um, is the way it's been described to me. And as a result, TiVo really struggled with the machines that they had. So they have relaunched as owners, and uh, they have rebranded all of their machines accordingly. They have some new machines coming that are really really nice looking so um, i'm talking specifically about the hydra really excited to take a look at that machine that's like a cr that's like a cr10 pro on steroids like it's got it's got some really nice features in that i'm really excited about seeing this machine that machine but let's get back to this one for the time being so there are some things about this that i don't necessarily like um, so one, the screen has a really strange um, viewing angle. So you have to be sort of like, you have to be, it has to be kind of at this height or you have to be at this height with this printer to be able to see it. The backlight's quite strong. Um, I really don't like A-series drivers um, and I will show you on the bench sheet in a moment why I don't like A-series drivers. Um, the bed strain relief, there isn't any. Um, and it's obviously only a single Z. That's fine. You know, there's plenty of machines that work perfectly well with a single Z. Um, I, 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 I prefer dual Zs. I just prefer them. I feel that this machine is more sturdy. I think it's got more rigidity. 
I think it's more even uh, at both sides. Um, but there are some things about it that I do genuinely really like. Um, this tall head actually does a really fantastic job with bridging and it does a fantastic job with, um, with vases and retractions. Um, the Titan Extruder is a really nice addition. It's a little strange to see a Titan mounted remotely, but that's not to say it's a bad thing. It still functions a lot better than those traditional swing arm tool heads that are, that are normally remoted, uh, remotely mounted for, for, for Bowdens. Um, there are some numbers on these wheels. Um, I don't know what they're for. <laughs> The thing is, is normally there's an arrow to tell you like this is putting the bed up, this is putting the bed down. Um, I don't know that remembering that numbers going up or numbers going down, I don't think that corresponds directly to whether or not the machine levels that way. So yeah, it's a little strange, but fine. Um, the bed PEI sheet is actually really nice. Stuff sticks to it quite well. Um, it's got an MKS Gen L board, so there's a lot of adaptability in that board. It's, it's a solid board. Um, and it's a full-size SD card slot on the front. I quite like that. So, not a bad machine. Not an amazing machine, but not a bad machine. So before, before we move on to anything else and we do some final thoughts, let's take a look at how some of the prints are coming out. So let's start with the obligatory calibration cube. So um, let's get this in focus first. There we go. So um, not a terrible calibration cube out of the box without any actual calibration that we did to it. The top layers are pretty nice. The bottom layers are a bit ropey. Um, I hadn't got the bed perfectly level at that point. Um, the side walls are actually pretty good. Maybe a touch of over extrusion there. Um, so that could be tweaked in slicer settings. We come on to the benchy. So um, let me see if I can get that to focus properly. You can see that on the sides of the benchy, there's actually a slight texture to it. That texture is A-series drivers. So A-series drivers get a something to do with the resonance between the drivers that causes vibrations onto the frame. And that's what creates the noise but it's also what, um, it also produces sometimes like a salmon skin effect. So the original solution to that was to buy, uh, was to buy TL smoothers that you fitted in between the, uh, on the stepper cables. The solution now is just to use TMC drivers, 2208s, 2209s, anything else, and it removes the issue. Let's take a look at the printer test. So the front walls on this, get that in focus there we go uh, is actually all right again a little bit of under extrusion on that one but the bridging on this is fantastic and the overhangs are actually really good these are all good up to about the 80 degree uh, the 80 degrees on both of these and the 75 on this side the underside of that which you can kind of see there camera's not really picking it up fantastically but they are actually the overhangs are really good retraction test is really good dimensional accuracy also very good on all of this test everything came out really as it should do and again that top layer really very nice we move on to the twist vase so um, this vase is uh, is printed obviously with no supports all at once um, it is not printed in vase mode because it is actually quite thick um, and it's a really nice retraction test because otherwise you get loads of blobbing on the outside. As you can see, there is none. It's worth noting that all of this film was done in EO, in, in EO 3D. Um, we get that from uh, one of our contacts called Luis and I will put a link to his store in the video description. It's a really nice PLA, nicely priced. Um, and, uh, and, and it's producing some really, really nice results. So let's move on to closing thoughts. So the first question anyone's gonna ask is, is it better than Lender 3? In ways, yes it is. Um, and I wanna be clear, it's not that this is a bad machine. It isn't a bad machine. It isn't a great machine. 
we actually managed to break. So when we were on the live stream, you can see there was a lot of play in the Z axis. Um, this was actually moving a lot. Um, it turned out the reason for that is we had actually, well, I say we, the Z brace that was on here um, was made of plastic and we had actually cracked it. So I don't know whether that was cracked in shipping or whether we cracked that as when we were assembling it or whatever happened, but one way or another, it was damaged. So uh, we contacted Homer. They actually sent out a brand new one to us and they actually sent us out the metal upgrade, which is what this one now has. Um, much, much stiffer. Almost no flex in that now at all. Um, I was really impressed with that. Really liked it. Um, there are definitely some things that I don't like. I don't like the single Z. I don't like the fact that it's A-series drivers. And I don't like that the, the screen on it is a little hard to read at points. Now, the good news is that this is the Odysseus Pro. You can buy the Odysseus RS for, I think, about $20 or $30 more. That has dual Z, a touch screen, an AC heated bed, and it has TMC 2208 drivers. They are not upgrades that you could do for that price to this machine. So, 100%, I would say that the Odysseus RS is better than an Ender 3 Pro. This is producing the same quality of prints that an Ender 3 produces but it won't go ridiculously fast and it won't do you know, some things that, um, that maybe an Ender 3 would. Like, I wouldn't be too comfortable doing miniatures on this. If you're doing a lot of low layer heights, that dual Z really is necessary to get those, to get those finer details done, level and even. Um, and you definitely need TMC drivers to do that because you'll get salmon skin and you'll get artifacts and effects and you don't want those and it's just not necessary. The AC heated bed, this bed takes a little too long to heat up for my liking, the RS does not. Um, and it's got a touch screen so it eliminates the issue that you're having with, uh, that I'm having with the viewing angle on this. My printers all sit on like a kitchen cabinet in my office, you've probably seen it um, in a couple of our live streams when it sits behind us. Um, and it just means that to see the screen properly I have to lean down a little bit. I'm old and fat and I don't want to do that. So, um, so the real question is, is who is this machine for? So you saw the two and a half hour live stream that it took us to build this. I certainly pretend like I know what I'm doing. You know, I, I have built 3D printers before. I've built BLV cubes. I've built hyper cubes. I've done kit machines. Um, I built that Jenny printer that's sort of an Ultimaker clone. Um, you know, I've built machines from scratch before. This wasn't a complicated build. It wasn't. It was a little more involved than I would have liked. And it really feels like it was a lot more involved than it needed to be. So um, I've spoken with, with, with Homer and they agree. Um, they're actually looking at developing a, a, an Odysseus version two. Um, and that one may very well look at becoming sort of that 90% pre-assembled that we're used to seeing now, where basically you screw on the A-frame, you plug in the motors and you're away. That one would be fantastic for new people. This one, not so much. This was quite an involved build. Um, I think it would be a little daunting to a new person joining. Um, that being said, if you were experienced and you were sitting down and walking through somebody, learning how everything goes together would actually be quite an interesting journey. So maybe, maybe that's something to consider if you're looking at getting, say, uh, you, 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 your son or daughter into, into 3D printing and you really want them to start understanding how a machine goes together, all the component parts and things, that would be a good project to do as like a, as like a parent and a child um, sitting down and, and going through stuff. It's not a machine that you would build a farm out of, not in the pro version. The RS, you could build a farm with those and you'd be very happy. But the pro version, not so much. The question is, is who is this particular machine for? And my answer is for tinkerers. It is for somebody who has absolutely no intention of leaving their machine stock. 
it's for somebody who has decided that they want to actually, um, they want to, uh, they want to tinker and do loads of upgrades. Maybe they want to put all linear rails on, or maybe they want to, you know, uh, put, a, put a Kevnovo bed on it, or they want to run it off a Raspberry Pi and install Clipper, or something like that. It's a great base to work from, and the price is such that you really can just tear this all apart and build it back however you want to. The frame of this is not bad. The frame of this is actually quite solid. You could do some pretty cool things with this. Um, but it's not a machine that somebody buys and then this is, it just works out of the box and you don't require any tinkering, any playing about or any of that kind of stuff. This is a machine that someone buys specifically so they can tinker with it. If you want a machine that's going to be a little bit more out of the box, the RS, that's a machine for you. Um, you know, that's much more comparable to the Anycubic Vipers, the, um, the, the sort of artillery Hornets, the longer LK4 Pros. That sits very proudly in its price bracket. This one is a little bit more niche. And I think that's a bit of a shame because in a world where for $30 more, you can buy the RS. I'm struggling to see the reason why you buy the Pro. Unless you are that person who is more interested in, I need the basic shape of a 3D printer so I can make something completely custom because I want to put a, um, I don't know, I want to put a BitQ H2 on this or I want to put a Hamera on it. I want to turn it into a, an all metal, um, you know, a, a, an all metal hot end that I want to put it in an enclosure for, for ABS. Or I want to, you know, I, I want to change out the main board, go for a Robin Nano, put a touch screen on it, stick a Raspberry Pi on and I want to run Clipper and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like that's who this machine is for. This is a machine for people who want to play about, who want to tinker, and who want to settle and fine tune. This is a great start for that. Um, with that in mind, we have many more machines coming soon. We've got a few secret projects going on in the background that I can't talk about. Uh, but we also have a Voron cube coming, a 350 by 350 Voron cube. Going to be amazing with that one. Homer are also going to send us their new little monster, which is going to be a huge Delta. Really excited about that. I love the way Deltas look. I've never actually owned one myself. Mike has had a couple. He's ended up moving those on, um, and I never really got to play with one, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and we've got a couple of other machines in the works as well. Keep an eye out for the Fulcos full review um, because we're working with those guys to, uh, to get that piece done. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.